My name is Dina Haynes, and I'm an adjunct professor here. I will give you some information that will make the process a little less confusing. I know when I went through it, there's too many certificate certification cyber words, and that makes it a little confusing. Um, the first thing I wanted to touch on is that cybersecurity is a big, broad category of different jobs. The more we get into this, the more jobs there actually are that they're kind of lumping under cyber. It is a hot job market out there, and everybody wants to be into it. And it can be anything from policy-related, which is sort of a job where you would write policy and implement policy in a company, to technical system admin jobs, to maintaining computer systems, to actually writing code, writing software, to doing what I do, which is cyber intel analysts, which is taking a bunch of data and then writing reports on that data. So broad, broad, broad. The good news is it is the number one job category in the metro DC area. It has been for a couple years now and it probably will continue to be. So if you navigate the waters, there's a lot of jobs out there, which I think makes it sort of exciting. Um, the first thing I wanted to touch on, certificates. So a certificate is really a group of academic classes that lump together into being an educational certificate. The key word there is it's typically done by an academic institution like AACC, right? And that's, you take a bunch of classes that are related and then at the end culminates in an academic certificate. So they can be non-credit or credit. Um, you're at the open house for workforce development and that is non-credit. They can also be credit. They can be, if you have a four-year degree, it is a great way to kind of tack on to a degree that you might have, a two or four year degree, and allow you to get back into the, into the job market, which is exactly what I did. So I have a degree in finance and IT, and in the world of cyber, then came back to ACC and got an, a certificate for digital forensics, tacked it on top of my degree, and then went out in the workforce with that. The confusion comes, and this is the key par part, that at AACC here, we teach material in certificate programs that lead to a certificate, that train you in the course material that you need to sit for a certification exam. And so that word certificate and certification is what makes everything really crazy. But you're getting two for one, and that's a pretty good deal. Certifications are industry designations, meaning that an academic institution does not issue them an industry, a private company, issues them. And they sort of came about with Cisco, who offered their um, certified network associate certification a long time ago, and Microsoft got involved with it. And what you're saying is that I have passed an exam, and I have the skill set to do this job function. Right? And they can be uh, company specific, like Cisco or Microsoft. Or then they became vendor neutral, which is groups like CompTIA, SANS, um, I, ISC Squared. They all got in the business and said, hey, we can do this too. We can give exams. We can say that you are good in networking and you don't have to be Cisco. You can do Juniper networks or whatever you want. So they're different. Um, what you'll find is that a lot of job postings will ask for either or both. And so that gets a little tricky. Um, but certifications are you take a test, you pass an exam, and that exam leads to a certification like um, CCNA or Security Plus or Network Plus, um, CEH, which is EC Councils. A key point there is you don't have to actually take an academic course to sit for a certification. But let me tell you why you probably went to. They range anywhere from $200 to SANS exams are about $700 right now. So you pay between $200 and $700 to sit for an exam. You probably don't want to not pass that one because they're expensive. Um, so taking an academic course just gives you the sort of background to be successful in that certification. One other thing I wanted to touch on with certifications, you might see in a lot of the job postings around here, is what they call DOD 8570. And that's simply a directive that the Department of Defense put out saying that all government employees and all contractors doing information assurance functions, which now end up in the blurb of cybersecurity, have to have certain certifications at a certain time. So for example, to get a DOD contract, Lockheed Martin has to show that its people have their certifications at a certain level 
to be awarded that contract. That's another source of confusion out there. You'll go to a job opening and they'll say, I need you to be 8570 certified. Well, that's not exactly true. There's different levels of 8570, but it gives you what the certifications are. The last bit I wanted to touch on is actually security clearances. So security clearances is just a status that says you have access to classified information. That's really all it is. Both government and contractor personnel have the same security clearances. So if you work for a federal agency or you work for a contractor at a federal agency, it's the same security clearance that you would get. And they come in three versions, secret, top secret, and um, sensitive compartmented information or SCI. The process is that you get fingerprinted, they do a pretty extensive background check, um, including in that is that they will contact all of your employers or former employers. The key there is that they will actually contact your current employer, which could be a little dodgy if your current employer doesn't know you are getting, trying to get a clearance for another job. Um, you can ask, they will call you first, the investigator will call you first, and you can ask if they not call your current employer. Uh, sometimes they agree to do that and sometimes not. Um, they talk to your neighbors, they talk to your coworkers. You provide all of your financial information, all of your criminal, drug, and alcohol use, and all of your travel outside the United States for the last 10 years. The whole basis of all that isn't really an invasion of privacy as much as it's they are trying to establish that you are loyal to the United States, that you will remain loyal to the United States, and that you don't have any contact with foreign nationals. And that's really it. But it is a long process. It can take anywhere from three to 18 months to get one. Some companies will bring you on and give you a job while you're waiting for your clearance. Um, most federal agencies will not. You just have to wait it out and you don't know through the process whether or not you're gonna get one. Um, I will tell you it's taking a lot closer to 18 months than three months, even though they're saying it should take three months. And I would also suggest that you don't lie on the, any of the forms. The way it works is if, you know, you happen to go to Colorado and, and take on their new marijuana laws, if you're honest about it, they might come back and say, hey, no, you can't do that. It doesn't work with our clearance. If you lie, you will never be allowed to get a clearance again in, in the federal agencies. So better to just be up front with that. Thank you again for 